The mean value theorem is one of just a handful of named theorems that we encounter in uh, the introductory calculus course. And uh, to be able to digest what the mean value theorem is saying, um, I prefer to think about it as what are the hypotheses and then what conclusion do we get out of those hypotheses. And when we read um, in a textbook the formal statement of the mean value theorem, sometimes we, uh, we overlook what it is that we need to be able to show to verify that the hypotheses are met, um, though we often think about our theorem as just what the conclusion of the theorem is. And so I want to just be very clear here with you guys to show you that the hypothesis hypotheses of a theorem must be verified before you do anything else. And so uh, the two hypotheses for the mean value theorem are that f, the function, um, is continuous on a closed interval a, b. Um, and more than just continuous, it needs to be differentiable. So f is differentiable. And we say on the open interval, a, b. And so if we have those two conditions met for a particular function, uh, then here's what we can say must be true. Uh, there is at least one c. Uh, and that c is in, um, and this symbol there, the little e looking symbol means is an element of. Um, so it's saying that the the um, value C is in the open interval AB. So that if you're thinking about numbers here, C is a number between A and B there. So we have, uh, there is at least one C in AB such that, and then this is the conclusion part that people um, usually remember for the mean value theorem. Um, F prime of C is equal to F of B over f minus f of a over b minus a, okay? And so that's the statement of the theorem, but let's digest this a little bit more here. So here we see the conclusion um, equation there, f prime of c is equal to the f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So what is that? Why is this something um, that that's important? What does it tell us graphically? How can we remember what this um, equation is? Well, let's look at the right-hand side there. Um, f of b minus f of a over b minus a is something that you guys are very familiar with. It's something we've um, done in other parts of calculus. It's something we've even done in algebra. It's really a slope formula. Um, and so if we're talking about um, the interval a, b, then we've got um, for each endpoint the function values f of a and f of b. Those give two ordered pairs on or two points on our graph. And so if we connect those two points, we're talking about a secant line here. And so the right-hand side of this equation that comes from the mean value theorem is really the slope of the secant line. And so over here, we're talking slope of secant line. Okay, so um, now we know that the right-hand side is the slope of the secant line, but let's go back to the, um, the left-hand side now. We've got f prime of c. Well, c is some uh, number in between a and b that we're guaranteed by the conclusion of the mean value theorem. Um, notice that our picture here is um, nice and continuous and differentiable everywhere, so we do have a picture that we're working with as an example picture that meets the hypotheses of the mean value theorem. So what we're guaranteed then by this theorem is some c in between a and b that um, we're, we're going to be looking at, um, when we're thinking derivative, we're also thinking slope. And so instead of thinking slope of a secant line, we're thinking slope of the tangent line. Well, what tangent line? How do I know? Where's my C? Well, what does it mean for two slopes to be equal? Well, two slopes are equal if the lines are parallel. And so let's look here. Um, if we ballpark maybe right in here for our, our point on our graph, so that would give us a C value there in between A and B, and we did a tangent line to that point, we would be looking at um, 
two lines there that are parallel. So this is the tangent line. And the big important thing is that these are parallel. And so those two parallel lines are exactly what I think about when I go through the mean value theorem. Um, I know that I need the slope of the tangent to be equal to the slope of the secant. And if you have those that single concept, then you could write out the equation that's given in our conclusion for the mean value theorem.